Welcome to another exciting and soul-lifting Sunday scriptures. By the grace of God, we will spend today and possibly next Sunday in bringing to a close our series on walking in the fullness of your God-given inheritance. Special emphasis on how to access and appropriate the inheritance of the saints in the light. In today's teaching, we will focus on the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the church that he bought with his own blood. And next Sunday, we will focus, God willing, on the ten vices that hinder the believer's overall progress in life. Before now, during the special communion service on the 10th, Sunday the 10th of March, I told you four vices. I got home and the Holy Spirit revealed more to me. So next Sunday, we'll look at those 10 vices. You know four already. There'll be six added to it. But today, our focus is on the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the church that he bought with his own blood. Let's establish that first and foremost. Acts 20, we we'll started reading from verse 26. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20 from verse 26. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shown to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take it to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I think that's enough. To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Do you agree with that? I cannot hear you. If he purchased it with his own blood, then the church is his and not any pastor's. No matter their status or stature or ecumenical titles they wear, the church belongs to Jesus. Can I hear amen? Amen. Please turn your Bible with me to Colossians chapter 1. I'll read from verse 12 to 18. It reads, and I quote, Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. If I were you, I would underline that, because saints in the dark cannot access this inheritance. Inheritance is meant for the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed, the King James Version said, translated, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That in all things he may have the preeminence. The word may is very critical because you are going to find out that in many churches in the world today, Christ does not have the preeminence. Yet he bought the church with his own blood. 
that he may have the preeminence in all things. On Sunday, March 10, 2024, during the special evening communion service, I mentioned to you that in order for us to access and appropriate the inheritance of the saints in the light, God did three major things. To make it possible for you and I to be able to access the inheritance of the saints in the light, God did three major things. Number one, he delivered us from the power of darkness. And if you have been a believer for a while, for some time now, and you still feel, or you still fear, beg your pardon, forces of darkness, something, your, your faith is questionable. If you fear witches and wizards, if you fear anything negative that the enemy can do to you, you are still within his reach. But he has translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He delivered us from the power of darkness. Number two, he translated us to the kingdom of the son of his love. And number three, he then qualified us for the inheritance of the saints in the light. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14 again. Colossians 1, 12 to 14, giving thanks unto the Father. Do you remember to thank him today for these three major things? You don't. You take it for granted. You just don't even know. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Do you still remember all these three things? Why did God do all that he had to do? To deliver us from the power of darkness, to translate us into the kingdom of the son of his love, so that we may have access to the inheritance of the saints in the light. Why did he do all those things? God did what he did because he is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And if you have to have fellowship with him, we cannot walk in darkness. God is light and in him it's no darkness at all. So we cannot be his and be groping in the dark. First John chapter 1, 5 to 6. This is the message, not a message. This is their message, which we have heard from when? From him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. I'm bold to declare to you that if there's any, any trace of darkness in you, you are either ignorant or you are not his. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. As for us, the saints... Not only did the Lord Jesus Christ declare that we are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, he also instructed us to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world, yes or no? Yes. Or oh, your yes shows. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Just as people can smell your fragrance, they can also see your light. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. People of God, the only way we can operate as a light of the world is to follow the Lord and walk in his light so that we can become the sons of light. If you are not following the Lord and walking in his light, you cannot become the sons of light. If it's convenient for you one day to walk in light, another day to try darkness, you cannot be his. John 12, verses 35 and 36. John 12, 35 and 36. Then Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Jesus himself said, for as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he turned to you and said, you are the light of the world. A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. This thing Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ himself, for as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Then he says, you are the light of the world. Now, this is one reason, just in case you don't know, why the word of God describes God as the father of lights. The father of lights. Jesus is light. You are light. So he's the father of lights in whom there's no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. I've explained that passage to you. Mrs. B's favorite passage. If you ask Mrs. B to pray, in those days she has only one prayer, or she had. Father, we thank you. <laughs> the next thing you will hear is <laughs> you are the father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. And I had to come to church to illustrate it to you that in the days of James, who wrote that passage in John, James 1.17, there was no wristwatch like you wear, no clock on the wall, they only use Sunday L to determine what light, I mean, what time is in the day. It is an erect rod that they put on the ground waiting for the movement of the sun. When the sun casts shadow to the left, they know it's 9 a.m. When the sun casts shadow to the right, they know it's 3 p.m. But at a point in time, the sun will be right on top of that rod and there will be no shadow at all. And they will say, the sun is at its zenith. is at the peak of its power. So James is saying, God, who is the father of light, is always at the peak of his power to do whatever he deems he seems to do. So you are light. I am light. Jesus is light. And God our father is the father of light. Is he your father? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, Matthew 5, 14 again. I will repeat everything that I've said so that it gets into you. You are the light of the world. Who is that? I can't hear you. Who is being referred to here? The disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ while he was teaching them the Beatitudes. You are the light of the world. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. But you... Brethren, just in case you do not see brethren in the previous one that I read, 5.14 of Matthew. Here is 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 5. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day shall overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Get up on your feet and thank him for that. I'm not part of darkness. There is no room for darkness in my life. I'm part of the day, capital D. I am son of light. There's no darkness whatsoever in my life. And there's no room for darkness in my environment, in my family, in this ministry, in the name of Jesus. Every trace of darkness in the name of the one who said, let there be light. We flush you out this day. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, from the lives, from the families, from the homes of God's people. Let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the light of the world. You are sons of light. You are not of the dark, of the darkness, and darkness is not in you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Who are the sons of light here? Let me hear you praise the Lord. You may be seated. Who is the one that gives us that light? Uh, you need to read that in, in John uh, chapter 1. He is the light that lights every man. Every man. If something is covering your darkness, it's because you have not seen that light. It's the light that lights everyone that comes into the world. John chapter 8, verse number 12. Or well, let me begin from John chapter 1, then I'll go to verse 8. John chapter 1, verse 4. Let me begin from the beginning. John, to, John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him I believe. It was not that light, John wasn't that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Every man coming into the world, it gives that light to them. But if you are born into dark areas, darkness covers you. But the day comes when someone will say, let there be light. I will begin to say the light of the word. As Reverend Emmanuel Labi stood on the podium on September 24, 1974, and declared, Jesus is the light of the world. The pillar of light I saw 10 years previous was standing behind him. Illumination came to me. Inspiration came to me. Life came to me. From that day, darkness has no control over my life again. I pray somebody will hear the word today and that light will penetrate inside your spirit and soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, John chapter 8, verse 12. And Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And James 1, 17 now crowns it all. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. To crown it all as a light of the world, God has also predestined us to be conformed to the image of his Son who himself is the true image of the invisible God. I hope you are listening. Uh, this is like a systematic delivery of God's word on you being light, he being light, and we having fellowship with light and not darkness. God predestined you and I to be conformed to the image of his son, and his son is the true image of the invisible God. So if I give birth to his son, who doesn't look like me in any shape or form? We need DNA. Hello. If I give birth to a child who does not look like me in any shape or form, it's likely not mine. If you are his, his DNA is light. You cannot be darkness. Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. And God has predestined you to be conformed to that image. It cannot be less than what Jesus carries. Romans 8, 28 to 32. And we know 
that all things work together for good. Uh, underline that because we are going somewhere major. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew before you were formed in your mother's womb, before I was formed in my mother's womb, whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, a practical example is when Judas Iscariot led people to come and arrest Jesus. They could not distinguish Jesus from the rest of the apostles. They looked exactly like him, that Jesus said, don't worry yourself, I know him well. The one I kiss is the one. He didn't kiss Peter. He didn't kiss James. He didn't kiss John. He kissed Jesus. But they all look alike that if there was no insider to point him out, they could have arrested anybody and called him Jesus. That's why there are many imposters in the church today. That they spend some time with us that they can speak Christianese fluently. Moreover, whom he predestined to be conformed to the image of the firstborn, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by who? By his son. So if his son is not speaking through a prophet, don't listen to the prophet. They have ways and means of controlling people. They are soothsayers and they are smooth talkers. They know what will please you and they say it. But if you cannot discern the voice of Jesus in any person, don't take what they are saying serious. He has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed, what? He of all things, through whom he also made the words, the ages, the aeons, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down because he has finished his job at the right hand of the majesty on high. Haven't become so much better than the angels. And as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So if you still go to churches where they are saying uh, Angel Gabriel, Angel Michael, Angel Chilean, and all the angels whose names are not in the Bible, something is wrong with your brain. Angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. They cannot be worshipped. They will not take worship from any man. When John in the book of Revelation, the island of Patmos, fell down to worship, he said, don't do that. Worship God only. Another truth you must bear in mind always is that all things Created in heaven and the earth, both visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion or principalities or powers, were created by him and for him. And as a result, all of them work together for his good and all of them work together in his favor. Why? Because it's the true image of God. So when Jesus shows up, God shows up. He told Philip, you are asking to see the Father. Don't you know that the Father menos dwells in me? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. We are getting to that place when they see you, they see Jesus.
a classmate of mine in the Nigerian law school, whose name I could not remember, whose face I did not recognize, called me from the blues because I posted something on that platform, greeting everyone happy Easter. So he got my number. He called me from the US. He said, my name is so-and-so. We were called to the bar in 1981 together. I said, yes, sir. I'd like you to pray for me. You don't know me. I don't think even I've appeared before you, you see me, but I saw what you posted on the platform and I took you. Know, I said, that's fine. You are a schoolmate. If not, you will not be on that platform. He said, my daughter died last year. And I'm being diagnosed with some terrible disease right now. I'm in the U.S. The diagnosis is not good, but I know you can pray for me and I will receive my healing. I paused. I said, send your name and I'll pray for you. And he sent his name immediately. I checked if that name was on the platform. And I prayed for him. And you are going to join me to pray for him. Why would he call me to pray for him? He noticed God answers my prayers. You are the Lord that he let her. You are the Lord our healer. You sent your word and heal our disease. You are the Lord, Father. I, you are the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. I, he led him. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Our healer, you sent your word and you heal his disease right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, Lord, you are the Lord. This day, Father, I present your son, your servant who approached me. I present him before you. Let your healing touch hit him in the area of that disease in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. I think dear individual, I share the testimony of one of my daughters with you. She has a neighbor who had suffered stroke before. And someone began to bang her door. Her mother answered and said, what is the matter? She was told what was happening next door. And the mother said in her heart, my daughter had been fasting and praying for some days now. She must have what it takes to help this man. I went upstairs and said, do quick. She was dressing to go to work. Something is happening to your neighbor. She quickly put on her clothes and went there and saw the man gasping for breath. I'd already saw her stroke, could not speak, could not open his eyes at this time. And she said, oh my God, this man is dying. I wanted to turn back. And the Holy Spirit said to her, so you don't have the power of the word in your mouth to pray. And she turned back. She forgot where she was. She just took her wig and threw it away and began to pray for the man and shook him. Call him to come back to life. The man opened his eyes, but could still not speak. He said, if you recognize who is holding you, wink your eyes, and the man winked his eyes. Then he began to pray violently again, and after she had prayed, they were able to revive the man to take him back to the hospital he went back, I think two days ago, she went back there to see that the man is alive, the man is talking, because suddenly she realized 
Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. <laughs> Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a wonderful change. Amen. Who is the father of light? I can't hear you. Who and who are the light? Jesus and us. So the father of Jesus is our father. The God of Jesus is our God. He said to Mary, do not touch me yet. I'm yet to ascend to your father, my father, to your God, and my God. Say it with your mouth. God is my father. So if you are light and Jesus is light and he's the father of light and Jesus is the express image of the invisible God and you are predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, if all things work together for Jesus, all things must work together for you. Yeah. Colossians 1, 15 to 16. Colossians 1, 15 to 16 is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For by him, say by him. By him. I can't hear you. By him. For by him all things were created that are where? In heaven and where? On earth, visible and invisible, including the inheritance of the saints in the light that are kept in heaven, reserved in heaven for you, about to be revealed in these end times, he is the creator of all things in heaven and that on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Mm. It follows, like lawyers will say, mutatis mutandis. <laughs> it follows that since God predestined you, to be conformed to the image of his firstborn, all things must work for you. Yeah. All the forces of nature, all the paraphernalia of government and governance, including thrones and dominions in the social, economic, and political realms should also work for you, for your own good and in your favor. Can I hear amen? Yeah. You need proof of that. Romans chapter 8. 28 to 39. Romans 8, 28 to 39. And we know. How many of you know? If you don't know, it can't work for you. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I can't hear you. If God be for us, who can be against us? They will give you the least of everyone who cannot be against you. Let's go. He who did not spare his own son... But deliver up, delivered him up for us all, how shall not with him also freely give us all things? The problem is, it has to be with him. He's willing to freely give you all things, but it must be with him. He's a total package. If it's without him, everything you have will destroy you. Who shall bring a, a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He won't shake me for me. Jesus will for me. He will not have me. I can't hear you. No matter your stature, man of God, your curse, costless, cannot come. 
Why? Because Jesus is making intercession for me. The Holy Spirit is making intercession for me. Two thirds of Godhead are making intercession for me. And you dare with your dirty mouth plays a curse. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Somebody answer. No. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Whether global or local? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Or sword? No. Okay, let's go further. As it, it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things... This is not the church I'm pastoring. In all these things, we are more than God. I can't hear you. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Maybe you don't understand. When a world boxing champion will go to the ring and he will fight and they will give him a belt and a check, He's a conqueror. He will get home, give the belt to his wife, and give the check to his wife. She is more than conqueror. Jesus is the one that conquered. We are the one more than conqueror. Olu, I go go for me. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You may be seated again. For I am persuaded. Are you? Let every man be persuaded fully in his heart. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yes, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. If you believe all that I've said so far, as I'm building precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, a little here, a little there, you accept God is light. I want a resounding yes. You accept Jesus is the light of the world. You accept Jesus is the one that lights every man that comes into this world? Yes. You accept that you are sons of light? Yes. You accept that God is the father of light? Yes. If God is your father, why do you go about uh, like you are an orphan? The spirit of Abba Father is on the inside of you. God is your father. I became conscious of him at a tender age. Because I had no natural father. God is my father. And he has been so faithful. Okay, God is my father, right? So I must look like him. In order to look like him, he sent his only begotten son. So I can behold him and look like him. Behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we should look like, but when we see him, we will be like him. Have you seen Jesus? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait for the apostolic summit. Have you seen Jesus? Ah, yeah. I don't think so. Have you seen Jesus? If you have seen Jesus, you cannot be the same again. Everyone that keeps his hope in himself purifies himself even as he is Pure. He sent his only begotten son here. He is the image, express image of the invisible God and you are predestined to be conformed to that image. And because he's the image of the invisible God, everything lines up for him because he created them. And therefore, everything must line up for you. Yeah. Nothing can work against you. You must walk in the revelation of this light and stop crying and stop doubting and stop complaining. You must walk in the light of this revelation that God is my father. He will take care of me in rain, in thunder, in storm, in famine, in circumstances, whether negative or positive, all things will line up for me. 
question. Why are they not working? Are all things working together for your good? If they are not working, there's only one critical factor missing in your life. If everything that I've said so far, you take it, yes, 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 yes. What then is missing in my life? The preeminence of Christ. Colossians 1, 16 to 18. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first man from the dead, that in all things... See, the word was carefully chosen that in all things he may if it's automatic he would have put he must have the preeminence because your will is involved in what and who has preeminence in your life. Dear brothers and sisters it is the preeminence of Christ in the church and in our lives that gives us unhindered access to the inheritance of the saints in the light. Please listen to me attentively as I define the lofty word preeminence. What does it mean? What does preeminence? What does it mean? It means the highest place of ascendancy. It means above all, Overall, surpassing all to the point that nothing and no one else can come close. Highest place of ascendancy, above all, overall, surpassing all to the point that nothing and no one else can come close. So when we say Jesus is preeminent, that means he is first in everything. First in importance, first in honor, first in exaltation. God saved my daughter, Fisayo. God saved her yesterday, saved her yesterday, only yesterday. I was trying to eat breakfast, getting ready to go and join the warriors of righteousness in the battlefield for the souls of men. And she got up, dressed up. Where are you going? I'm going to VI. I like to do my pedicure. Pedi what? He said, Dad, I went to church yesterday. I said, I don't care. Pedi, what are you going to do? In VI, you can protect yourself when you get into the car till you get there. She sat down and said, I will go with you. <laughs> and when we finish all things, how joyful I was. As I was sweating, she went to get cold coke for me and said, Dad, you need this. I opened it and I looked at her again, along your head. <laughs> and I drank, I drank the coke. Is Jesus preeminent in your life? Is he first? Or you have other priorities? Then perish the thought you can never access the inheritance of the saints in the light. It must be first in importance, first in honor, first in exaltation. According to scriptures, God's ultimate intention and purpose is that in all things, Christ must. Not Christ may, Christ must have preeminence. The question we need to ask ourselves is simple. Is Jesus the preeminent one in your life, in your home, in your business, in your ministry, in your family? Oh, yes, I know. 
We all say he is very, very important to us. Is Jesus important to you? I can hear you. <laughs> this is why we invest much time in serving him, in worshiping him, in praying to him, or praying God to God the Father in his name. This is why we show him so much love. But friends, it's not enough that Jesus have prominence in our lives. We are not talking about prominence. We are talking about preeminence. For many of you, Jesus is prominent in your life. That's why you're here this morning. But it's his word, the final authority in your life. Once you make up your mind to do something contrary, and the word of God hits you, do you line up immediately that the word of God is the final authority in my life? I want you to know that the preeminence of Christ challenges us who call ourselves Christians with the following uncomfortable implications. Are you ready? Number one, do we want to be called a Christian or do we want to be a Christian? <laughs> do we want to be called a Christian or do we want to be a Christian in secret and in the open? Number two, do we want to be thought of as yielded to God's will? Or do we want to yield to God's will? Do we want to be taught of? Oh yeah, that brother is yielded to God. Are you really yielded? Number three. Do we want to appear that what matters most to us is Christ? Or do we want Christ to matter most? Do we want to appear... That what matters most to us is Christ. Or do we want Christ to matter most? Number four. Are we satisfied with the veneer of Christ-likeness? You know veneer? <laughs> it's just veneer set on wood. It's not that wood itself. Are we satisfied with the veneer of Christ-likeness? Because it is good enough for others, or do we want to be Christ like? Finally, do we want to do and say the kind of things that others will say we seek God and we seek to honor Christ above all others, or do we want to honor Christ? Above all others at all times. Do we say things or do we do things that will make others feel that we honor Christ or do we truly honor Christ? I pray this word today will minister to you that you now wear the veneer of Christ likeness, that you will truly be Christ like. Honestly, I cannot even finish the preeminence of Christ today. So there will be preeminence of Christ next Sunday. And there will be a preeminence of Christ. Others will take it and continue to amplify it until you get it. Do you understand me? Because we are going to look in the Bible and see those who love to have preeminence in the church. Like diatrophies. I need to decode that for you so that you know in many circles in the world today called the church, the occult is presiding over the affairs of men. They are diatrophies, and you're going to understand fully. I want you to rise up on your feet. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. You must have the preeminence in my life. Lord, I want to be more Lord Jesus, yes, Lord, I want to be a vessel.
you walk through. Lord, I will. Is that your prayer this morning? Lift Jesus up. Oh Lord. I want to be more like you. Oh yes, Lord. Lord, I want to be more like you. Hey, yes, Lord. I want to be a vessel you walk through. Lord, I want to be more like you. 1985, I started building my first house at the campground of Redeemed Christian Church of God. We have gotten to the roof level and the builder was coming on Monday to collect 15,000 Naira for the roof as agreed. I'd gotten the money ready for him to come on Monday. On Friday, I was in my little prayer room praying and the Holy Spirit said, give all that money to the church. I brought out scripture. If any man is building his house, is not able to complete it, he's a fool. Lord, I started, I will finish. This 15,000 naira is meant for the roof. You said it will start, we should finish. And I didn't see anything anymore. I thought I won the argument. My wife is a living witness. Friday evening, my best man sent someone to Lagos. He said, while we were praying in Ibadan today, the Lord said to us, you are struggling with him, that he will wipe you out. A small note he wrote to me. I knew what area. I took the check, wrote 15,000 naira, went to Ibutimeta, Pastor Akindele, of blessed memory, I gave my check to him and said, sir, <laughs> um, I, I was led by God <laughs> to bring this money to you. He opened and said, wow, praise God. This is the amount left for what God, what Pastor Deboe said we should do before he traveled. We have looked for it everywhere. God has used you. Let me pray. I said, don't pray for me. Please don't pray because I'm not a cheerful, willing giver at all. Not a cheerful, willing giver. And he said, whether you are cheerful or you are not cheerful, I'll still pray for you. He prayed for me. I wasn't happy. It was like God robbed me. Of course, the builder came on Monday. And there was no money for roof. And I told him, brother, I prepared the money, but God took it. But God wasn't angry. I finished that house in style. You can ask her. The Lord prepared a table before me. You will hear more next Sunday. From that simple obedience, I earned the first $286,000 in my life. I will tell you in full details. Lord, I want to be more like you. <laughs> Oh, Lord, Lord, I want to be more like I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be a vessel you walk through. Lord, I want to be more like you. Hear this and take it away with you. You can have access to all of his if he doesn't have access to all of you. Jesus said so in John 17, all mine are yours, all yours are mine. I am no longer in this world. I step out of the system of the world to plug into God. He must have the preeminence in my life. Good morning, God bless you.